So maybe you have heard of blackwork embroidery and you are curious to try it. Did you know that there is more than one type of blackwork embroidery? If I just say blackwork, for example, you just go to a museum, we'll say the Victoria and Albert Museum, and you go to their website and you just look up blackwork. You will find different types of embroidery all under this umbrella of blackwork. Pretty much when you say the word blackwork, that just simply means it is black thread that's embroidered on something. Typically, it's silk thread on linen, but when you say black work, it could be a counted geometric stitch, or it could also be like a swirly floral stitch where you get stem stitch, seed stitch, pretty much anything. There is some counted stitch sometimes in the pattern. Like for example, you might find a leaf and where the leaf is curved, but inside you might find a grid pattern and in that grid pattern it's counted. But for the most part, the swirly floral stuff is not counted as it is with Holbein stitch or double running stitch, which is the earlier black work. So there are different types of black work, depending on what you're interested in, will also then determine how you are going to get started on the black work. To do the double running stitch, which is the embroidery that I have been focusing on for many, many years, it is counted stitch. And with that, you will have your linen and you simply have your pattern and then you create by counting the holes and you create your pattern from the pattern that you already have created. That's a lot of creating. So we'll just say you are doing a simple line, but you are doing the whole bind stitch, the double running stitch, the geometric counted stitch of black work. What you are going to do is you are going to have your pattern and then decide do you want to do every third hole, every fourth hole, every fifth hole, depending on how, how far you're going to count will then determine how small or how large your embroidery project is. But we'll just say you're doing a line. I like to start left and then go from left to right and then back but that's personal preference. You could start from the right and then go to the left. If it's a circular pattern, I like to start in the center and then work my way around going clockwise and then filling in all my stitches counterclockwise. And what I mean by filling in my stitches, it's a double running stitch. So if I start on my far left and then I will count over three holes and then put my needle down through the fabric, count over three holes and then my needle goes up count over three holes and my needle goes down. And so then I've got a dashed line on my linen. Once I get to the very end of where I want to stop, my needle will then, with the silk thread, will then go back the way I came, going up and down through the fabric. And then I will be filling in all of those blank spots. So in the end, I will have a straight line that is reversible on both front and back, but it's all counted stitch. And from here, this is where you can get into all of the intricate patterns. You can do lattice patterns, you can do flowers. There are all sorts of things you can do that are geometric shapes, and but it's all counted stitch. Now, if you're looking to do more of the swirly florals, black work embroidery stitch, which is more common from about 1540 on up through 1600, and you will find this a lot on sleeves, on the top part of a smock, you, on coifs, you will find the swirly floral stitch. And what they would do, they would use a method called pouncing or prick and pounce. And so you would have a pattern, they actually have books for example, here is a book, and inside this book there are patterns, and there are German pattern books, there are Italian pattern books. The funny thing is they plagiarized off of each other. And so you'll find the same German pattern 20 years later in an Italian book, or vice versa, where page 18 on the left side is the same as page 21 flipped on the right page of someone else's book. So they plagiarized off of each other. 
but you would have these pattern books and so from there from the pattern I could then poke holes in the pattern lay that pattern down onto the fabric and then take something like charcoal powder and just brush that on and so then I've got little dots on my fabric and then they would take ink and trace over and then they have now transferred that pattern onto the fabric and then they would embroider over the pattern and we know that they used ink to put the pattern on there because specifically in England I believe it was the iron but when they would do their black or make their thread black they used I and like I said, I believe it's iron, but they used more iron than what the Spaniards did. And so over time, that thread has disintegrated. So in museums, for example, the Victorian Albert Museum in London, they have a couple of coifs that have embroidery on it. The thing is, you'll see some embroidery, but then the rest of the embroidery has disintegrated. And then we just see the inked pattern where they embroidered over the pattern to create the call. And also it makes sense to use if you're using black silk thread, it makes sense to use black ink because black on black, you're not going to see the ink as much once you are done with your embroidery pattern, especially depending on the type of embroidery. It might be thicker than the inked line, so it's going to be hidden. A fun thing with that, how I said with Spaniards, Spaniards did not use as much of the black. It was still black thread, but they did not use as much as the English did. And so if you go to a museum and you find a Spanish piece, or if all of the embroidery is intact, it probably is a Spanish piece, or at least done with thread originally obtained from Spain. Just And you know this simply because it hasn't disintegrated yet. Where I said I like to focus specifically on counted stitch for blackwork embroidery, but also known as Holbein stitch or double running stitch. This is a sampler I did years ago and these um, these are 16th century Italian patterns that are on a sampler at the Victorian Albert Museum in London and as you can see the embroidery is pretty much reversible. The only thing that can tell you what is the front and what is the back, this is the front and the only telltale sign that this is the back is if I zoom in closely here, you can see where the tail ends are for my thread. And I have found a couple of examples that I was super excited about from, and I believe it's at the Victorian Albert Museum, where they have the backside of the embroidery and you can see where the tail ends have been woven into the patterns. And so that just made me super excited to see what I've been doing all along is historically accurate. For the sampler, I used Guterman silk thread if you are looking just to get started with black work embroidery and you want something that is cheap, that's machine washable, then this is it. It is not as bold as some other silk threads out there, but this is a good starting place. But on this sampler, I did every third hole. So you have holes within the linen and so I would count over one, two, three, and then do a stitch and then one, two, three, and then do a stitch. To show you the difference, this is every fifth hole. As you can see, this pattern is larger than this pattern over here. This is a partlet, and this is a combination of a couple different historical patterns. For example, this ocean wave pattern here, this is from the collar. It's the, I believe it's called a noble boy Portrait of a Noble Boy with a Marmoset. It's at the Kunst Historisches Museum. It's either in Vienna or Bas Basel. But either way, Portrait of a Noble Boy and right along the collar here, he it's a Hans Holbein, the younger portrait, and he has the ocean wave pattern. So I've incorporated that in there. The ocean wave pattern can also be found uh, on the cuffs of Jane Seymour, the third wife of Henry VIII. The only difference is on her ocean waves, there are little tails right You've got part of an ocean wave and then there will be a tail down on the diagonal. And then on the, the diagonal pattern here, this pattern is from James Stewart, who was the Earl of Moray, the, the half-brother of Mary, Queen of Scots. He's also illegitimate. But the flower pattern on his pattern is different than my flower pattern, so I modified the flower pattern to make this one more my own, but I still stayed within the rules of blackwork embroidery. If you are looking for inspiration on 
an embroidery pattern that you would like to embroider, I highly recommend looking up some of Hans Holbein the Younger's portraits. And even with that, here it is to me a funny little thing. The double running stitch, the geometric reversible pattern or well, embroidery that I do is also known as Holbein stitch. The thing that I find amusing is if you look at Hans Holbein the Younger's portraits from about roughly 1540 on, some of his portraits have the spruily floral kind of blackwork embroidery and not the geometric blackwork embroidery that was iconic from England earlier in like the 1520s and the 1530s. But even though he painted the swirly floral kind as well, it's the geometric kind, the double running stitch that's reversible, that is still considered Holbein stitch. And I think that's probably because there were other artists during the time from Europe, from about 1500 to 1550, that were also painting black work on their, in their portraits, but you'll find one artist only painted one. One artist maybe painted two portraits with black work, whereas Holbein had at least 25, 26 different portraits or drawings that we know of today that have black work. So we know that some of the portraits he painted over the years have been lost to things such as fires because he painted in the 1530s into the 1540s. I believe he died in 1543. And so 500 years later, yes, some of the portraits no longer exist, but we have his drawings and we know from the drawings that the portraits had blackwork embroidery. And so who knows how many more may have also had blackwork embroidery where we don't have the drawings. And so it makes sense that from that time period, he was the person, the artist that was painting the most portraits with black work in it. And when I'm saying black work, that is either the, the counted stitch type or the swirly floral type. I hope that I have answered your question as far as what the differences are with black work, because black work is so much more than one type of stitch. You do have the double running reversible stitch, which is also Holbein stitch, or you also have the swirly floral embroidery, which is iconic from, we'll say specifically from England from about 1540 up through 1600. Thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video and would like to watch more of my videos, please follow the links on the side of the page. Please select thumbs up that you like the video. It helps with the algorithm. If you have questions or comments, please post them below and please click subscribe and ring that bell to be updated when new videos come out.